Live from the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center here in Sugarland, Texas, the Legacy Sports Network is proud to present the Interscholastic Hockey League. Tonight, it's a South Division matchup. As the teams return from the holiday break, the Ridge Point Panthers meet the Seven Lake Spartans. Good evening, everybody. Michael Silver is along with David Feliciano. Delighted to have you with us. The ISHL returns. From the holiday break, and tonight the Ridge Point Panthers and the Seven Lake Spartans meet for the second time this season. The Panthers come in off a 6-6 tie against Klein back on December 19th, where Kean Stafford scored five of the Panthers' six goals, including the last three of the game, to earn the tie. The sophomore has had a wonderful season so far. He will not be in the lineup tonight. He is scratched and out of town but he's had a great season to pace the Panther squad. He has, and we've saw, we saw a lot of them last year as a freshman. Off to a great start this year, 28 points, 20 goals, eight assists, a big loss for Rich Point. So you gotta talk about it as we will at this game, where's the scoring gonna come from? They'll miss him, but they still got a lot left in the tank. The Seven Lake Spartans lost their last two games of 2021 after a 5-4 win over Fair Creek. Last time out, they were shut out three nothing by Pearland Friendswood. And through their 12 games, Dave, they've struggled to find the back of the net. They have only averaging 2.5 goals a game and, and no real go-to man. Uh, the first line struggling a little bit. Uh, it's kind of a rebuilding program the last few seasons, uh, but we'll see how they perform tonight against a slightly better Rich Point team. Coming up next, we'll give you the starting lineups, the scratches, and our goaltending matchup as we are just getting underway here from the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center. Glad to have you with us this is the Legacy Sports Network. What's in a name? A name can tell you a lot about a company. Take First Community Credit Union, for example. First Community Credit Union is just a better place to bank. They serve the families and businesses in the Houston, Katy, and Fort Bend communities. They take pride in the name First and want to be the one you look to, well, first, because they've been a leader in the financial community for the past 50 years with services like free checking, free bill pay, and a free Visa check card, as well as great rates on auto, mortgage, equity loans, and credit cards. First Community Credit Union promises to make a first-rate financial difference in your life. Find out why FCCU is just a better place to bank. Think first. First Community Credit Union. See what your friends, co-workers, and neighbors have been keeping a secret all these years. For more information, go online to FCCU.org or call 281-856-5300 today. Bonfire Wings is a neighborhood-based, fast, casual counter service restaurant. Bonfire Wings specializes in 12 unique flavors of hot wings. Traditional favorites like gumbo and boudin are mainstays. They boast wing sauces with creative names such as Cajun Mojo, Garlic Parmesan, Spicy Creole, Insanely Hot, the award-winning and top seller Honey Barbecue, Hot Lemon Pepper, and Sweet Heat. Two Houston area locations including in North Shore on Wood Forest Boulevard. Bonfire Wings, genuine Creole, uniquely Cajun. Looking for electrical help you can count on? Switch to Mr. Electric. We have some of the best trained electricians in the business, and they're ready to help you with any project, big or small. Best of all, with Mr. Electric, our work is 100% guaranteed. That's why so many people trust Mr. Electric. We've got the power to make things better. Mr. Electric. Lockwood Funeral Home in Houston, Texas blends traditional values with modern ideas to honor the individual spirit. We'll guide you through the process of planning a funeral or cremation from start to finish, meeting your needs and honoring your family traditions and personal preferences. We're here in your time of need. Lockwood Funeral Home has been serving the Houston community for over 50 years and we have burial and cremation packages available for you and your family. Give us a call at 713-633-1421 or visit our website at lockwoodfuneralhome.net. Are you ready to restart your path to wellness? At the hotel. 
Back at the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center. Scratches for tonight's game for Seven Lakes under new head coach Reed Heiser. Scratches are Melvin Nair, Shakib Alam, Laney Heiser, Cody King, Andrew Pang, and Casper Drabzinski. For Ridge Point under acting head coach Tom Anderson, head coach Eric Gould is out of town this weekend. Scratch from your lineup, Brent Kasich, Jeb Gould, Charlie Blake, the team's leading scorer, Kean Stafford, and Brendan Ryan. Starting goaltenders tonight for Seven Lakes, the freshman James Dorsey, a 4.25 goals against average and an 878 save percentage. He'll match wits against the sophomore Kai Weaver of Ridge Point, who's got a 533 goals against average and an 820 save percentage. Starting lineups are brought to you by the walk-up company, the Metal Fabricators. Starting for Seven Lakes, at center will be Brett Condra. The Fords are Evan Stewart and Ryan Amix. On D will be Vincent Key and Ray Chang. For Ridge Point, the center is Drew Blake. He'll be flanked by Hayden Haas and Dara Rajagopal. Jackson Gross and Nolan Boltina are on defense. Keys to the game brought to you by First Community Credit Union. Think first. Well, missing players for one. Seven Lakes is missing two of their top four scores, Pang and Drabzinski. Ridge Point is missing three of their top four. That's 65 points, not in the lineup tonight. And we've got some younger goaltenders with high GAAs. So I, I think you kind of throw out the rule book tonight. Seven Lakes scoring, as we said, not very good. They need some help in the second and third lines. Goaltending has to be better than four points, four, four to seven goals a game. Uh, Rich Point still got some gas in the lineup. Very good power play for Rich Point, 37%. They could lean on that. They got to try to get up early. Coming up next, we will drop the puck for this matchup, the first of 11 games this season on the Legacy Sports Network, and this our 12th season of coverage of the Interscholastic Hockey League. Glad you're with us. Let's have some fun. The puck drops next. Forming, rolling. Are you ready to restart your path to wellness? At the Hotsi Health and Wellness Center, the most common goals that we hear from our new guests are losing weight, increasing energy, improving sleep, and increasing mental focus and clarity. Most importantly, people want off the prescription medications and to get back to a healthy and balanced life naturally. Are these your health goals too? Let us help you take charge of your health and wellness, just as we're helping thousands of others every day. Get off the meds and on to wellness naturally. Let our doctors, nurses, nutritionists, and wellness coaches carefully craft the healthy life you've imagined. Feel better, look better, live better. Visit HOTZHWC.com to learn more or call us at 281-698-8698. Mention this ad and receive two of Dr. Hotze's best-selling books free with your consultation. 281-698-8698. That's 281-698-8698 or Hotze, hwc.com. Forming, rolling, punching, cutting, welding. If you know what I'm talking about, you know it's the Walk-Up Company. The Walk-Up Company has become the leading metal fabricator in the Houston area because we can offer you something few others can match. Extensive fabrication experience, a highly seasoned and skilled workforce, high-tech equipment, and the stability you want in tough economic times. Family owned and operated for years, so you know we'll be here for the long run. And our commitment to quality work and customer satisfaction makes the walk-up company the right choice for you. Visit us at walkupco.com. That's walkupco.com. The walk-up company. Your imagination, our fabrication. This is the second meeting of the season between these two South Division rivals. The first game played back on October 17th is certainly one the Spartans would like to forget as they were hammered 10 to 1. Drew Blake picked up a hat trick in the game for the Panthers while both Brock Cote and Kean Stafford each scored a pair of goals. Kai Weaver started in goal for Ridge Point and stopped 8 of 9 while both Ryan Amix and James Dorsey played in net for Seven Lakes. Amix led in six and Dorsey allowed four goals. Andrew Peng had the only Seven Lakes goal. Some uh, new members in the lineup for Ridge Point. You'll see him wearing a blue jersey. That is Brendan Morrow. And number 13 might read Heffernan on the back of his sweater. That's Ryan Amix. Straight Jesuit, one of the newer teams this season in the league. Unbeaten Dave, 13-0, leading the way. Six more points than both Cy Woods and Klein of the North Division with 20. 
those are the top three teams in the ISHL through the holiday break. Right out of the gate, first season for SJ, my alma mater. And uh, again, a lot of their players played in this league for a few seasons. Uh, they played up other high schools because Jesuit didn't have a team. Jesuit gets a team and right out of the gate, as Mike said, 13 and 0. And we'll be doing a few of their games this year. We're looking forward to that. They are an exclusive team. That means nobody on that team goes to any other school but straight Jesuit. The officials for tonight's game, John Dibbert and Charles Knifik are the referees. Dan O'Sullivan and Andrew McCray are the lines. Ridge Point in black and Seven Lakes in white as we're about to get underway here from Sugarland. Condra loses the faceoff, but gets the puck in the offensive zone, shoots up high, saved by Weaver right off the faceoff as the puck is played by Nolan Boltina. As he skates from left to right as you watch us live, Via Max Sports TV, a long wrist shot and a save by Dorsey. We'll see how these young goaltenders do tonight. Dorsey only a freshman and Weaver a sophomore. Brett Condra leads Seven Lakes in scoring with just 12 points, eight goals and four assists. The leading scorer for Ridge Point, Kean Stafford, a sophomore, fourth in the league in points, is out of the lineup tonight. Played up the near boards, but not out as Jackson Gross with a shot that was blocked in front. Comes out to Valerie Kupich, and she sends it in deep. Will be played off the backhand. Seven Lakes will skate it out. Here's Chang had. It poked away from him by Jackson Gross, turned over at the blue line. Now it is Nolan Boltina on his backhand. Boltina skating in, splits two defenders. Twib pivots with the puck, and Cuppet sends it in down low. Play it around the boards. Back up by Nicholas Arzakoya. Down the corner, Valerie Cuppet. Working one-on-one -on -one with Ray Chang. And Chang plays it up the boards, but Cupich denies him. Just underway, a minute 20 gone here in the first period. Here's Nolan Boltina now, left point. Tees up a shot and drives one that is just deflected wide. Spartans can't clear the zone. Sent in deep for Cupich to play it behind the net. Taken off the play by Chang. Plays it up the far boards and back out the center ice. Panthers come burrowing back in, played up the far boards. Drew Blake, number 18, the senior with 25 points, second on the team in scoring behind Kean Stafford. As the Spartans fail to clear again, Blake with a slap shot and a pad save by Dorsey. Here in the first period, Ray Chang plays it high off the glass. It'll be gloved down by Condra, uses the boards to get it back out to center ice. Brendan Morrow wearing blue, the only blue jersey, so he'll stand out. Here's Elon Schmoish. His shot deflected wide into the corner. Ricochets to the point where it is sent around the boards. Schmoish will play it in the corner. Taken off the play by Vincent Key, a sophomore for the Spartans. And up the boards, but not out. Kept alive by the Panthers, and then it's intercepted. And right along the blue line it is kept in by Morrow. Pushed into the boards, but he'll get possession of the puck. Tries to stuff it in at the side of the net, and Dorsey says no. 2.55 gone by here in the first period as the Spartans will carry in from right to left with Murphy. But then it is taken away off the steal by Ibrahim. Ibrahim will give chase in his own end. Up the boards for Schmoish. Backhanded at the half wall by Tapia, and then lifted to the blue line, but not cleared. Schmoish does push it out to center ice, but turned over. Here's Gabori with a long drive, and a save by Weaver. First save by the sophomore, Kai Weaver, who came in, giving up over an average of five goals per game. Tapia can't clear the zone. Here's a long wrist shot that came off the stick of Gabori. 
And it went wide. Now Nolan Boltina in deep. Shoots from a tough angle and shoots it wide. Panthers will recoil with Jackson Gross. This is a Panther team that's averaging over six goals a game. Gross plays it through center, chipped in by Haas. Haas splits the D, but couldn't get a shot off. Good defense as the Spartans came back. 4-10 gone by here in the first period, still scoreless. Glad you're with us here on the Legacy Sports Network. Here's Ryan Amix. Amix, up until this year, was the Spartans' only goaltender. And he had been begging former head coach Paul Connolly to skate out for a game or two. Now with James Dorsey in the fold on the back end, head coach Reed Heiser in his first season has let Amix skate out. He has one assist this season. Haas backhands it in. Sinclair giving chase. He has a help from some one of his teammates. And the Spartans will skate it out with Ray Chang. Chang gains the zone, leaves it for Kadra with a high wrist shot that goes over the crossbar. Amix backhands it into the corner, Stewart in on the forecheck. Panthers come away with it, but then turn it over the goal line. A backhander by Stewart off the side of the net, loose puck in front, and it's controlled by Kadra. Kadra, a senior. Has skated in 11 games this season. This is game number 13 for the Spartans as we're almost five and a half gone here in the opening period. Puck comes out in front and now Nolan Boltina tries to get by Ray Chang as he gains the offensive zone and a good poke check from behind by number 52. No score here in the first period. Morrow keeps the zone along the left point and now Condra Oh, that could have had a two on O if he got possession of that puck. But he was not able to at center. Pitch back in, but only just inside the blue line. Now it's Amix who leads Stewart on the backhand and a save by Weaver. Out comes Boltina. Nolan Boltina, senior with 11 points, five goals this season and six helpers with a centering pass and Cuppet shot it wide. Puck at the side of the net. Another save by Dorsey. Chang below his goal line, working against two Panthers, Cuppich. As now Brendan Morrow finds Drew Blake with a shot. Nice kick save by Dorsey. Now Morrow with a wrist shot. That is blocked right in front with eight and a half to play here in the opening period. No score from the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center. Michael Silvers and David Feliciano with you. At the blue line, it's Elon Schmoyce with a wrist shot. That is deflected wide by Key. Long slap shot in the corner from a tough angle by Drew Blake. Never reached Dorsey. At the point. Oh, came back out the center ice, and now Murphy getting past Morrow. Skates in on the forehand. A soft shot harmlessly goes wide of Weaver's net. Cross ice feed to Schmoisch. And he is pushed into the boards in a great stiff check by Vincent Key. Kabori comes in on the Ford check, and that puck goes down for an icing with 7.45 remaining in the first period. Well, you can see the skating not as tight with the, the better players not at this game. A and a tough first defensive shift for Seven Lakes. That was a long shift, but they righted themselves and had a, a much better last few possessions. The shots are actually five to four for Rich Point. And the goaltending, these young goaltenders, Mike is pretty good so far, all stops. Here's Gabori off the defensive zone faceoff. Elon Schmoyce sends it into the zone, quickly cleared by Seven Lakes. Wholesale changes. I don't think we're going to see a lot of stoppages, Mike. Uh, the penalty minutes for both squads, not very high, uh, not aggressive as as compared to somebody like Cy Woods, who's got an astounding amount of penalty minutes. So the refs might let him play tonight. Panthers in their own end. With 7-10 to play in the opening period, no score. Here's their turnover. Evan Stewart skates in, hassled by Boltina, and he picks his pocket. 
Leads it ahead for Haas. Too far out in front of Haas. Able to control. Shoots from a tough angle. And now the catching glove of Dorsey. Puck up ahead to Amex. Skating along the right wing boards. Puck taken from behind by Boltina. Shot back in by Stewart. Boltina swings it around. Out of the reach of Haas. It comes back out to the neutral zone. Pass Sinclair. Haas with a burst of speed. Couldn't get to the puck as it was sit cross ice to Amex. Panthers controlling with Drew Blake. Weaves in. Tees up a shot and fires one wide. Kept alive by Roger Gopal. And now Amex gains the zone before it is quickly cleared. Back out the center by Morrow. Here's Ibrahim for the Panthers. Off the board, sit ricochets for a chip. And back come the Panthers. Zerikoya. Now Valerie Kupic swings and misses. And it comes out the center, back in for an offside. It was a two-on-two two after the, the shift change, and Ridgepoint couldn't put together a shot. Good defense by Seven Lakes. Starting to even out a little bit. The best shot of the game by Drew Blake, a nice slapper from about 40, missing. Ray Chang has it in his own end. Out the center for Gaburi with five and a half to play. Azarkoya to the near boards, Morrow. Off the boards, Azarkoya. Shot was sent into the corner by Dorsey. Two Panthers in on the four check. Puck at the side of the net and controlled now by the Spartans. Five minutes to go. Gabori and across the line. Watched by Morrow. Puts on the brakes. Gabori laid back to Sinclair at the point. Across for a wrist shot by Chang that is off wide, hit the side of the net. As Weaver couldn't glove it to stop it, it'll be sent ahead by Gibson. Oz Ozarkoya into the corner as they'll battle there. One on two. Ozarkoya puck taken away. And it's Gubori up the far boards for Cole Tapia. Tapia the sophomore, burrows in across the line. His shot sticked away by Weaver. Now it's Murphy near boards. Two Panthers monitoring him. They continue to battle on the near boards. And it's forced back out the center ice for Ray Chang to fire it back in. Bounces into Weaver's catching glove and he'll just drop it at the side of his net and keep play alive. Nolan Boltino with a long wrist shot goes wide of Dorsey's net. Schmoisch in on the four check. Pays a centering pass that goes all the way through off his backhand. He kept alive by Gross at the point. He sends it in deep for Schmoisch in the left wing corner. Another backhander that hops to the side of the net. Controlled by the Panthers. Centering pass and Schmoisch couldn't get a shot off. And the Spartans are able to clear it out to the center zone. Panthers. On side, and delayed penalties coming up on Key. Centering pass at the front of the net, and Schmoisch couldn't break it home. Battle along the far boards, and it's touched up by Seven Lakes, and the game's first penalty is coming up here with 3.15 remaining in the first period. Key came in pretty hard, gave a rough elbow. First two-minute variety. Roughing on Key. Yep. I think that's a good call. Power play for Ridgepoint, pretty good, 37%. Of course, a lot of their top guns are not here tonight, so let's see how the younger players make do. Shots are eight to five, Ridge Point, no score. Ridge Point has the league's second 
best power play, converting at a 27% clip this season. Seven Lakes penalty kill is fifth as they have killed 81% of their penalties. Shot by Morrow is stopped by Dorsey. Pass in front, Blake couldn't get a shot. Got it back, shoots and scores. You never clear the puck right in front of your goalie. And that's what Seven Lakes did. And Blake hopping on that, that's too easy from about 10 feet out. Dangerous clear. Power play goal by Drew Blake, his third power play goal of the season at 13.04 of period number one has given Ridge Point a one to nothing lead. That didn't take long, Mike. I took about 30 seconds on that power play. And that power play was brought to you by Mr. Electric. We have the power to make things better. Here's Gabori. Got it back into the Panther zone. Turned over at center, sent all the way down. This will go for icing with 2.36 to play. Well, Blake's a solid player. I mean, he's a senior, upperclassman of this bunch, second leading scorer, 16 goals, 10 assists, now 26 points. He's going to have a big role tonight. He's the sixth leading scorer in the entire league. Face off to the left of Dorsey. Comes back to Morrow. Morrow shoots and a chest save and into the glove. Morrow needs to get a uniform. He's too good. He's getting a lot of ice time tonight. Dorsey with a 4.25 goals against average coming in for a team that is now minus 25 in goal differential. That goal scored by Ridge Point now gives them a plus 30. They came into this game fourth in the league with a plus 24 goal differential. Puck back at the point, long shot. A pad saved by Dorsey. 2.15 to play in the opening period. Back comes Seven Lakes and speeding on in. Ray Chang on a breakaway, shoots, saved by Weaver. Big time save by the sophomore Kai Weaver. And this game remains 1-0. Well, Chang, one of the faster skaters for Seven Lakes, best opportunity of the night for the Spartans. I don't know how he got free that easy, but he went from mid-ice all the way and stuffed by Weaver. Amex, Chang at the point. Oh, a nifty move and a shot that goes high off of Brett Condra, his stick. He had a hat trick against the Woodlands back on November 7th. He has a couple of three-point games as Drew Blake skates in, shoots. And Dorsey says no. 1.45 to go. Jackson Gross wheels it in deep. Blake behind the net. His brother Charlie not in attendance tonight. He is scratched from the lineup. Amex for Seven Lakes. Backhands it into the center zone. Where it is Jackson Gross to play it at right defense. Use the neutral zone boards. Get it back out to the Seven Lakes zone before it is quickly brought back in. Here's Nolan Boltana for the Panthers. Up to Elon Schmoyce, chipped off his stick and back into the Spartan zone. And the Spartans couldn't clear it as Sinclair had his clearing attempt blocked by Schmoyce. Now Ray Chang puts on the brakes and wheels it out to Condra, who will shuttle it in. Here's Condra, stick handling, turned over. Andrew Blake will skate it in from left to right. Got by Sinclair. In behind the board, Sinclair takes him out. Great play. 45 seconds to go in the first period. Spartans clear the zone. Final 40 of period number one as Boltana has it, and he's watched by Stewart on the four check for Seven Lakes. Seven Lakes, two points behind Memorial West in the South Division. Straight Jesuit, 10 point clear of last year's Justice Cup champions in the last 20 seconds. Memorial West won the last two Justice Cups. Now here comes Condra. Brett Condra steering to his right in the corner with a centering pass that's intercepted by Boltina with five seconds to go. And we have come to the conclusion of the first period with the score. Rich Point one 
And Seven Lakes nothing. Back in a moment after this on the Legacy Sports Network. Bonfire Wings is a neighborhood-based, fast, casual counter service restaurant. Bonfire Wings specializes in 12 unique flavors of hot wings. Traditional favorites like gumbo and boudin are mainstays. They boast wing sauces with creative names such as Cajun Mojo, Garlic Parmesan, Spicy Creole, Insanely Hot, the award-winning and top seller Honey Barbecue, Hot Lemon Pepper, and Sweet Heat. Two Houston area locations including in North Shore on Wood Forest Boulevard. Bonfire Wings, genuine Creole, uniquely Cajun. There are only two names to know when buying or selling commercial or residential real estate property. Kim Walt and Danette Watuski in Houston with Remax Top Realty are those two names. As part of Remax Top Realty, Kim Walt and Danette Watuski make your transaction smooth. Remax Top Realty, hashtag we work for it, congratulates all local high school athletes. Their phone number is 713-777-SOLD. Excellence ER is a 24-hour, seven days a week emergency room. That's mission is to provide top-tier emergency room facilities to regions and communities that have traditionally been undeserved. We strive to bring back the small town community feel of medicine with all of the modern medical advancements. We're located at 15119 Wallaceville Road, Suite 100 in Houston, Texas. We have a new hospital coming soon to the area called East Houston Medical Center off Wallaceville Road. Visit us online at excellenceer.com. Excellence ER, don't wait. Second period about to get underway. 1-0 Ridge Point. First period shots, Ridge Point 12, Seven Lake 6. The only score, the power play by Drew Blake. Didn't take very long. Ridge Point on top, one zilch. Teams will switch directions. This is the period of the long change. 15 minute periods in the ISHL in case you forgot. Spartans try to control the opening faceoff, coming out of his crease. And ooh, ooh, Dorsey almost paid the price for it. If you try to poke it away, now a stuffed in chance by Raja Gopal. And Dorsey makes an early save in the first 13 seconds. Always a risk when you get out of that crease amid traffic. I wouldn't recommend it. Luckily, Dorsey getting back just in time. Seven Lakes averaging just two and a half goals per game. We said at the top just how difficult it's been for them to score. Boltana shooting from the point. Stopped by Dorsey, loose puck in front. And the Spartans clear. Here's Amex. We told you he's been basically the Spartans get netminder. Their only netminder in the last two seasons. Drew Blake burrows in into the offensive zone. Good defense by Key as he is able to get the puck free. There's a long drive by Jackson Gross that is ricocheted wide. Raja Gopal has it the near boards. Her centering pass goes off the boards and out the center for Evan Stewart to wheel in, then the senior plays a centering pass that goes to Amex on his backhand, shooting one, and at the side of the net, oh, they have a chance, and the Spartans couldn't tie it up. Boltina, washed out by Condra, now it's Ray Chang, plays it up the near boards. Boltina pinches in, centering pass goes all the way through, and Stewart couldn't clear it. Kept alive by Morrow at the blue line. He pinches in deep. Morrow, watched by Key on his backhand. Ladled it back for Azarkoya. And it comes out the center and Bondra lifts it in. Bondra's trying to go one on four. Ridge Point missing their top score. Key and Stafford, fourth in the league in points, fourth in the league in goals. Also missing Jeb Gould, who is second in the league in assists. Ibrahim wheels it around behind the net. Kept alive by the Spartans, and now Morrow will skate it out. 2-10 gone by in the second period. Ray Chang made sure Morrow couldn't get it in deep. Gabori. Battling at center. Now Oz Koya sends it back in for Sinclair to play it for the Spartans. Up the boards, but not out. Got to lie 
as Ibrahim risked a shot wide. Azakoya along the far boards. Canceled out by two Spartans. Morrow in to help. Puck is loose and comes back out to center. Tom Anderson is behind the bench tonight for Ridge Point. He coached in the first five games of the season as Eric Gould was unavailable. He's also the head coach of the AA Wild here locally. Ray Chang, Elon Schmoish, the stalemate at center. Now Ibrahim taken away. Gabori will skate in on the angle. On his backhand, scores! Owen Gabori, the freshman, scores his first goal of the season, and this game is tied at one. First goal of his career, and that, that was really smooth. He picked his pocket and made a, a nice move on the younger goaltender. That, that was pretty easy for a freshman. Nice first goal for Gabori. At 314 of period number two, Gabori scores four seven lakes, and this game is tied on an even strength goal. And now they battle in front of the net, and the Spartans clear. Nolan Voltina. Condra sends it in deep. Voltina will play it there. Up the boards for Elon Schmoish. Nice chip pass. And Drew Blake taken into the boards by Sinclair. They battle in the corner, and the puck is frozen. And a whistle blown by referee John Dibburn. I don't see a penalty. 3.54 gone by here in the second. Mr. Culling, oh, there's, looks like, I thought Blake might have been called, but just an official timeout. Elsewhere tonight, the Woodlands is at Cy Woods. That game will start in about 15 minutes at the Willowbrook Aerodrome. The other game tonight that was scheduled, College Station and Straight Jesuit, which would come after this game here at the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center, is canceled and a forfeit loss for College Station. They didn't have a coach nor the requisite amount of players to compete tonight against Straight Jesuit. So in the record books, it'll go down as a victory for the Crusaders giving him 13 wins on the season. Raja Gopal wasn't able to connect with Eric Gibson. Puck flip back out to center ice. And Boltina, stick handling, pass Amex, forced to the far boards. Working to get the puck back from Vincent Key. Shot one, that is stopped at the, side, at the top of the crease. Gibson backhands it down low for Haas. Haas with a centering pass from below the goal line. Got cleared out of danger by Chang. As the Spartans get it out. Here's Condra. Skates yep. across the blue line, but the play is offside. 4.59 gone by. They were in stride, and Condra kind of peeled inward, and Stewart got stuck on the far side. That, that, they had a three on two, really good opportunity, unfortunate for Seven Lakes. 4.59 gone by here in the second period. 1-1 is the score. This first game of the season between these two took place on October 17th, a game the Spartans quickly erased from their memory as they lost 10-1 that night. Panthers control, Ibrahim. Drew Blake and across the line. Pushed by Key into the boards, maintains possession. Continue to battle along the near boards. And Gabori, boy, is he a big guy. Yep, for freshman. Owen Gabori. Taken into the corner by Morrow. Drew Blake defensively on the back check. Sends it ahead to center zone. Here's Ray Chang. Comes in across the line. Looking to give the Spartans a lean. He shoots it high and wide. Tapia at the half boards. Turned over, fed back out to center ice, but the Spartans control. 
off the neutral zone boards and in deep Ibrahim and Chang and the play is whistled down for an icing with 8.51 to play in the second period. Chang just couldn't catch it. If he does, that waves off the icing. Uh, Chang, uh, again, a great skater. We've seen him over the last few years. And with, that in, with Seven Lakes down in players, a lot to ask of him tonight. Offensive zone draw for the Panthers. This season, through the holiday break, the top scorer in the ISHL, Cy Woods' Ryan Kaufman with 31 goals and 38 points. Top goaltender, Misha Saratatsev of straight Jesuit with a .83 goals against average. Saratatsev was the goaltender for Memorial West last season, the Justice Cup champions. Remember, no champion was crowned two years ago due to COVID. Memorial West won it in 2019 and then last year. Stewart canceled out by Gross, but he gets a centering pass that is deflected towards Weaver. Weaver steers it into the corner. Almost seven minutes gone by here in the second period, and we're tied at one here from the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center. Along the near boards, Gibson taken away by Amex. Amex skates in and shoots and scores! His first goal of the season, and the Spartans take a 2-1 lead. Amex, the goaltender, ice time, and it's paying off for seven legs. I don't know how that got through. I thought that was gonna get stuffed by Weaver and a nice golden goal for Amex. Well, Amex over the last two years, you heard us talk about it. He had been begging <laughs> to all, skate out. But all he the was, goalies beg. But in talking with Paul Connolly through email this week, the former head coach who's now an assistant head coach but not in attendance tonight, said he just didn't feel comfortable putting anybody else between the pipes with really no experience. Amex was the only seasoned goaltender on the team. Drew Blake shoots from a tough angle and that just softly drops into the catching glove. He's not a fast skater, but the skills are there. The goaltenders usually have really good hands and, and everything, so nice first goal for Amex. I hope he gets some more this season. Face off to the left of Dorsey with 7.44 to play. And shot right off the face off as saved by Dorsey. Ibrahim keeps the zone, and then it's forced back out to center ice. On delayed offside, it's Amex, the goal scorer, who has given Seven Lakes a two to one lead here in the second. Morrow, now it's Condra. Condra skates in, this play is onside. Condra with a wrist shot, saved by Weaver. Stewart battling. And the Panthers able to work it back out to center, but oh, that looked like that was offside, but a long wrist shot is off target. Puck deflects all the way around and back out to the neutral zone for Chang to backhand it. It's center for Amex. Stick lifted from behind by Morrow. Stewart, ooh, an open ice hit by Haas, and that will draw a penalty. That was a blind hit too. Brutal. Haas oh. goes to the box for roughing. That, that'll that will clean your clock a little bit. And the first opportunity on the power play for Seven Lakes, that's something that they've been trying to improve on. They're only 15%. So good shot here. Aiden Haas, first penalty of the season for the sophomores. He will go sit two minutes for roughing. This is a Mr. Electric power play for Seven Lakes who are 10th in the league in power play percentage at 15%. Coming in on the shorthand is Drew Blake, and he shoots, and a glove save. Rebound given up by Dorsey, but he drops and covers. Uh, shorthand right off the bat, never a good thing when you're on the power play. Blake almost slamming that home. That, that's the best save of the night for Dorsey. Kean Stafford has the Panthers' only shorthanded goal of the season. This penalty kill is 12th in the league. They've been giving up some goals on the penalty kill this season, killing just 67%. Boltina shoots, it blocks Schmoish with a shot and a stick saved by Dorsey. Battle in the corner with the Spartans on the power play. 30 seconds killed by the Panthers. Panthers got their only goal of the game so far on the power play and it was quickly 
scored on the power play. Now Morrow. Morrow on the shorthand. Good defense by Chang. Morrow keeping it in the Spartan zone and killing more power play time. Now the Spartans get possession with Annex. And the numbers game catches up to him defensively and comes back out to center ice as a minute now killed by the Panthers. Doesn't feel like a power play, Mike. Sure doesn't. Tenth best power play in the league as Condra skates in across the blue line. Around the boards, Boltina back to play it for the Panthers. Ahead up the near boards as Schmoish got it to the blue line. Gabori, goal scorer for Seven Lakes here in this second period. Five and a half to play with 30 seconds to go on the Panther kill. Boltina couldn't get it past two Spartans. Stays in control down towards the crease. Buck in the slot, and now it is Key off the backhand, back out the center. 15 seconds to go on the Spartan power play, which has not looked or resembled any kind of power play so far in this second period. The first power play of the game for the Spartans. No Panthers shots. kill it as Haas skates out of the penalty box. 4.45 remaining in the second period, 2-1 Spartans. From behind the net, puck is lifted all the way down as a skate race. Getting to the puck first, Eric Gibson and the freshman wiped out in the corner, waits for help, gets help, side of the net. Now a wraparound bid, forced to go wide, comes back as Morrow. Up top for a blast by Boltina, saved by Dorsey. Nice puck movement by Ridge Point. Three players touching it and a slapper, and Dorsey with a solid save. And it, that power play for Seven Lakes, a tough one. No shots and didn't have possession much of that time. Tried to improve on the next one. Drew Blake got the scoring started at 13.04. Period number one gave the Panthers a one to nothing lead. Two goals in the second by Seven Lakes. 3.14, Gabori, even strength marker. And at 7.03, Ryan Amix has given the, fan, uh, the Spartans a two to one lead as Morrow. Up the far boards, Gibson. Up top for Haas. In down low, key, watched by Haas. Works it around the boards. And he'll come out the center. 11 minutes gone here in period number two. Here's Ibrahim at left defense. Flips it ahead to the blue line for Raja Gopal. Hayden Haas canceled out. Puck hops in the air off the stick of Key. Key backhands it back out to center for Morrow to play it for the Panthers. Must not have brought his jersey tonight. No. Gibson in across the line, has Haas breaking to the net, and a shot from the half boards stopped by Dorsey. I'm impressed with the goaltending tonight. I mean, these are young goaltenders seeing a lot of shots and really good saves. Uh, often you, some of these young goaltenders are going to have a bad night, give up four, five, six goals, and so far so good. Face off to the left of Dorsey. Played up the boards, kept alive by Boltina with a shot that goes off the glove of Dorsey. In the corner, Drew Blake turned over, and now it's Condra breaking out with a three on one now. He's got Amex to his right, attempts to pass it his way. Good defense by the Panthers, and now Valerie Kupic up ahead to center. For Ozakoya. Here's Drew Blake. Blake skates in, drops it back. Ozakoya looking for a centering pass to Valerie Cuppage, who's at the top of the crease. But the Spartans are able to get control and come burrowing in on the four check with Ray Chang, looking to make it three to one. Chang shoots and scores. Three one Spartans. The dangle, Mike, the dangle. You can always whip it across, go right to left, and pulls the goalie out of position. And, and just a matter of time, Chang's too good a skater not to get good looks, and he puts it home. Third goal of the season for the sophomore, Ray Chang, and now it is 3-1 Spartans. They came into this game 3-6-3, three, three, only nine points in fifth, three points ahead 
of last place Cinco Ranch. Although both of those teams each have three goals, or excuse me, three wins. Seven Lakes, three more points because they've had three ties on the season. At the side of the net, Condra is stopped by Weaver. He gets it back and it is taken away from him. And now Morrow up the boards and a big hit on Ozarkoya by the Spartans. There's gonna be a penalty called and it'll be touched up by Chang. It's looked like Amex is gonna go. Yeah, roughing on Amex, big hit. So th this is good for Rich Point. They're down 3-1. They, they really could use a power play here. Try to get back in this game with two minutes to go in the period. Try to make this one work. All three penalties called tonight have been roughing. Yeah. And it's a Mr. Electric power play for Ridge Point. They're one for one tonight on a goal at 13.04 of the first by Drew Blake. Is that puck ricocheted and got deflected up over the goal and off the high glass. Blake, Morrow, shoots, it's blocked. Comes back to Blake who shoots and that one kind of off the butt end of his stick. He'll get it back, left point. 150 to go. Here's a one-timer that is softly deflected as it went on its way towards goal. Now a turnover right in front. Boltina on his backhand. Not sure Dorsey even had to get a stick on it. Now you got somebody alone in front. That's Schmoich on the backhand. Sent it wide after he got the feed from the right wing corner. Chang couldn't clear. Nice glove down by Blake. Shot that one in and out of the catching glove, but Dorsey falls on it. Gets a whistle with 126 to go in the first period. 116 to go on power play. Really good 45 second shift there for Rich Point. Got about three shots off. A lot of pressure. You can just see the difference in the power plays. Rich Point very solid. Off the tie up. Gibson below the goal line. Centering pass goes through. Now it is Blake in the circle. Feeds it down low. Backhander, bouncing puck, and it's cleared by the Spartans. Good clear. One minute to go on the power play, 65 seconds remaining in the second period. Morrow, rink wide, Gibson from Blake. Now Boltina into the offensive zone. Wrist shot that is chipped wide by the stick of Chang. Comes over to Blake. Down low, side of the net, stuff in chance by Boltina. Now a centering pass, a backhander just wide off the stick of Boltina. 40 seconds to go in the period. 25 seconds remaining on the man advantage. Azarkoya, top of the left wing circle. Shot is blocked and it is cleared. 15 seconds to go on the power play. Got time for one more rush on this power play. Second period winding down, 15 seconds to go. Morrow. They're not gonna get it. For Blake. And the Spartans kill the penalty. Amex comes out of the box. Boltina stood up. Here's a long off target shot by the Spartans, by the Panthers, I should say. Puck right on top of the crease, the flex into the circle, and that is it for the second period. We're through two. It is 3-1, Seven Lakes on the Legacy Sports Network. We've got the power to make things right. Mr. Electric, show you the light. Looking for electrical help you can count on? Switch to Mr. Electric. We have some of the best trained electricians in the business, and they're ready to help you with any project, big or small. Best of all, with Mr. Electric, our work is 100% guaranteed. That's why so many people trust Mr. Electric. We've got the power to make things Roach Partners LLP, located in Houston and Dallas, offers a complete range of tax assurance and consulting services to a diverse portfolio of clients. Their team is dedicated to the highest ethics of our profession with a commitment to excellence. This is accomplished by putting an emphasis on providing superior professional services specifically tailored to meet the needs of our clients. DeRoach Partners aim to provide valuable insight, effective solutions, and maintain long-lasting business relationships. Their high recruiting standards and culture of excellence is uncommon and unrivaled. They want to wish all the student athletes good luck. Visit DeRoach Partners on the web at dpll.cpa. 
At McCree Ford, we know you have a lot of choices on where to buy your next vehicle. We have spent over 70 years treating our customers like family, and our mission is still the same, to treat you with honesty, integrity, and respect. Come see us. There is no obligation to buy, and we can walk you through our transparent process. There are no surprises at the end. Plus, McCree Ford customers can take advantage of our free Loaners for Owners program. Come see why our customers say, McCree Ford, that's my dealer. Located on I-45 South, exit 19 in Dickinson, or shop McCreeFord.com. We're through two periods here from the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center. Seven Lakes scored three goals in the middle frame and have a 3-1 lead after two. And they scored those three goals on four shots. Very productive. Ten shots in the game for Seven Lakes on three goals. Rich Point had nine shots in that period, 21 overall. So Seven Lakes being out shot two to one, up on the scoreboard three to one. We're underway here in the third as Brett Condra risked a shot in and out of the catching glove of Kai Weaver. A battle in the corner. Two Spartans, two Panthers. Puck is dug free and the Panthers control. Here's Drew Blake. Got by Vincent Key. Centering pass, failed him. And Key plays it up the far boards. Turned over, Boltina got it back. Wrist shot, siled wide. At the side of the net, Blake trying to stuff in chance. Puck hops over to the side of the net. Played behind there as Blake battling with, I believe that's Gabori. And no, that was Amex. Now it's Condra. Condra down in the corner, skates along the goal line. The centering pass was blocked by Boltina. Another centering pass was stopped at the top of the crease. And the Panthers recoil, try to get something set up here as they trail by two early on here in the third. <laughs> Puck hits one of the uh, decorations, I guess, for some sort of a yeah. winter festival or type of event. You can't compete at the Nutcracker, Mike. You just can't. Shoot for the stars. Rich Point. Trying to go three on five. A couple more guys, and they got them. Here's Ray Chang. God uh, took a weird deflection off the inboards. Puck is loose in front. Comes to the near boards for Morrow. Backhands it in down deep for a centering pass. Looked like that was from Boltina. And the Spartans couldn't clear the zone as they lead by two. Now it's Ray Chang. Gibson on the four check. Gibson looking for a centering pass to Azarkoya. And the puck is deflected into the corner. Jackson Gross, or is that Boltina? Side of the net, wrap around and shutting the door, Dorsey. Dorsey really good when Rich Point's behind the net. That's a very tough play for a goaltender. It's like that blind spot when you're driving. And he stuffed him a number of times. Face off to the right of Dorsey. Up top, Cuppage. Now it's Tapia for the Spartans. Cole Tapia to Gabori, who gains the zone. Turns with it, kept alive by Sinclair. Down the boards, then back up to Schmoish as the Panthers steer in. It's Drew Blake with a shot that is blocked right in front of him. Uh, it's tough to block shots in this league. Gabori made it look real easy there. Two and a half gone here in the third period. Ray Chang along the near boards. Left it there, and Schmoish will come back in on the four check and send it in deep for Drew Blake to play it. Gabori goes down below the goal line.
Ooh, big hit Penalty. as Tapia That's is going to go. Roughing or boarding? Another or roughing penalty. Yeah. Is it, are all penalties roughing tonight, Mike? So far, all four of them. That's Tapia. That yeah. penalty comes at 303. Excuse me, Dave. Oh, I'm sorry. Rich Point. I mean, they got to make use of these power plays. Uh, they're going to run out of time. Get that uh, goal, get a little bit closer. They're one for two on the power play. Shot by Brendan Moore, ricochet side of the net. Dorsey didn't know where the puck was, and another shot, he makes the save. You know, Dorsey's faced 23 shots, saved 22 of them. Looking real solid. Here's Drew Blake, down at the half boards. Coming in deep, Hayden Haas. Centering pass, they couldn't get a shot off as Gibson's bid was blocked. Now it's Gibson. Boltina. Got by Amex. Centering pass in that one, a little too much on it. And Haas couldn't get a shot off. 40 seconds killed by the Spartans. They have a two goal lead. Now it's Nolan Boltina who shoots. And that one deflected wide. Gibson tries a centering feed that is deflected to the near boards, and the Spartans clear it out to center. Jackson Gross, excuse me, that's uh, Brendan Morrow ahead for Boltina. Now across for Gibson. 52 seconds remaining. Drew Blake backhands it down below the goal line for Gibson. Now Chang with the interception. We'll skate it from right to left for seven legs. And he got his pocket picked from behind by Boltina. Now it's Blake who skates in, shoots, saved by Dorsey. Gibson up for Haas. Now Morrow, wrist shot from up top. And in Boltina shooting one at point blank range. Dorsey closes the door. 20 seconds to go on the power play. Here's Boltina. Boltina with a centering pass. One timer by Blake, he scores. Just a matter of time. Too good by Rich Point and about five, five. Another power play goal with 15 seconds remaining. You, you just can't ask your goaltender to save five or six shots on a power play. And, and Blake's too good. He was wide open right about 10, 12 feet out and Rich Point really needed that goal. Another power play goal. And Blake scores his second of the game. And it cuts the Spartan lead to one. Good game here to kick off our coverage of the 2022 season for the ISHL. We'll be back on February 4th with doubleheader coverage as Cinco Ranch will square off against Pearland Friendswood. That's followed by these Spartans against the league's best straight Jesuit Crusaders. That's in roughly a month on February 4th, right here, beginning at 6 on the Legacy Sports Network. Here's Murphy, and he'll shoot. That one blocked and deflected by Morrow. Up for Azarkoya. It's outletted to Drew Blake. Brody Sinclair cancels him out of the far boards. Kept in by Ridge Point with Ibrahim, then a turnover. Azarkoya now a backhander that hits the side of the net from the stick of Jackson Gross. Six minutes gone by here in the third period, and it's a 3-2 Spartan lead. Here's Drew Blake who skates in, looking to tie it up. Shot the save by Dorsey. And a penalty at the end of the play. And it's gonna be a hook, and I think the Panthers are going back on the man advantage. Hook behind the net. Sometimes on defense, get a little desperate. Well, this is not good for seven legs. That's on uh, Sinclair. Now, Rich Point, such a good power play last time. They're two for three on the power play tonight. Try to convert here. It's 
Penalty comes at the 6'10 six, six, mark. Drew Blake shoots, and that one hopped up off the initial save by the stick of Dorsey into his glove. Now Rich Point is approaching 30 shots for the game. This power play is brought to you by Mr. Electric. We have the power to make things better. 153 to go on the power play. And this is the fourth power play for the Panthers tonight as Drew Blake slaps shot sailed wide. Cleared and into the penalty box by Ryan Amex. Seven Lakes cannot get sloppy here. Last power play, Cheng tried to clear it on his own. Too slow. Just send it down the ice. Don't try to bring it up. Still got to kill another minute 40. Plenty of time. Backhander. Gibson at point blank range is stuffed by Dorsey. Puck is hopping and bouncing in the slot. Another backhander by Boltina. That one wide. Schmoich with a backhander and going all sorts of directions and contorting his body. Dorsey and the Spartans end up clearing it down. 40 seconds killed by the Spartans on this Mr. Electric power play. Now Drew Blake with some speed. He'll steer across the red line and then is canceled out at the blue line by Amex who skates in on the shorthand. And it's now Ibrahim who had some help with, by, with Gibson along with Gibson to take it away from Amex. Now it's Boltina. Boltina steers in, shoots that deflected wide. 45 seconds to go on the power play. Schmoish loses it, cleared by the Spartans. There you go. Just keep it simple. Get it down the ice. We got to hold off here for another 30. Panthers trying to get something started. They trail by one. Blake hit by Condra, cleared again by the Spartans in the last 20 seconds of the power play. The difference between this kill and the last one night and day. Now it's Haas. They'll begin to rush up the ice. Drew Blake stick handling. Blake has Haas cutting to the net and his pass went in deep. Fultain along the half wing boards. The Spartans kill this one. So the Panthers two for four on the power play tonight. 6.40 to go in tonight's game. Raja Gopal centering pass, sticked away by Dorsey. Cross ice pass from the circle, a shot by Blake. It's deflected up and over the goal off at the glass. Puck goes back to the point for Ibrahim. Sweeps it along, Drew Blake. Tries to shoot one towards goal, it's blocked out the center ice. They're taking too long to shoot. Once you get it on your stick, unleash it. Blake. Up for Haas, off his stick. Here's Boltina with a wrist shot wide. Here's a shot by Haas, and a save by Dorsey. Off that rebound. Now Evan Stewart. Chance with numbers, here's Condra who skates in. And Weaver makes a pad save off the shot by the lefty Condra. Out to center ice. Back along the blue line where it is spun in by Stewart. Cleared by the Panthers. That'll be an icing with 5.33 remaining at the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center. They had to do that, had to make a line change. That was the first offensive pressure by Seven Lakes this period. And five minutes to go for Rich Point to tie this win up. You gotta get your best lines in there. They got Morrow in there, that's good. Got Gross on defense, and this is the last shot here. Face off to the left of Weaver. Gibson won it. Puck comes over to the goaltender. He had to sweep it into the corner. Morrow out to center ice. Now Gibson charging ahead. Taken off the play from behind by Key. Got it in deep. Gibson tries a backhand centering pass. And it'll be cleared out to center ice by the Spartans. Cup it, chatter blue line. 
Spun back in by Key. He'll angle in. Shooting one, that is sticked away by Weaver. And now it is Gross. Ahead for, uh, for Azakoya. And they skate in offside with 4.51 to play. Now coming up on February the 4th, the ISHL is back on the Legacy Sports Network with the doubleheader. Up first, the Cinco Ranch Cougars square off against the Pearland Friendswood Flyers. That's followed by the Seven Lakes Spartans meeting the league's best straight Jesuit Crusaders. It all gets started at 6 p.m. right here on the Legacy Sports Network. Face-off win outside of the Spartan zone. As they have a 3-2 lead, looking to win their fourth game of the season. Well, Cisneros fell down as he pivoted on the ice. Blake in deep, working against Tapia. And Sinclair couldn't clear it. Here's a shot that is blocked from the point. And back come the Spartans with Gaburi. Owen Gaburi steers in across the line. A little bit caught up in traffic with his own man, Murphy. And it comes up the far boards as the Panthers look for the game-tying goal. Here's Drew Blake. He's got both of the Panther goals tonight. Key, couldn't clear. Boltina with a wrist shot, punched away by Dorsey with the blocker. I don't know how he saw that. Ladle back to the point. Ibrahim, his shot deflected by Tapia, who went down on the ice. Now it's Boltina with a wrist shot from a tough angle. That is sent wide of the net. Ibrahim throws one towards goal. It is blocked and intercepted in the last 3.30 of the game tonight here in the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center. Now Gabori, a goal scorer back in the second period. Taken off the play by Boltina. They battle along the end boards. And the puck is worked free, but a penalty is called, and it'll be holding. And we'll see. I think it's going to be on Ridge Point. And pleading his case, indeed, on Ridge Point. And Boltina, that's a big loss. Yeah, for sure. One of their better playmakers. Well, they didn't lose too much on the last power play by Seven Lakes, so we'll see how this turns out. Third penalty taken this season by Nolan Boltina. Mr. Electric power play for Seven Lakes as they have it in the offensive zone, but it is cleared and brought out by Morrow. Leads it ahead for Blake to chip it in deep. Three minutes to go, 20 seconds killed already by the Panthers. Blake has Gibson in the slot. Blake behind the net, holding, feeding Gibson at the side of the net. And the puck is loose and controlled by Condra. Puts a shoulder into Morrow, who goes down. But the puck in deep in the Spartan zone with 1.15 remaining on the Spartan power play. Here comes Chang, and he skates in offside. Good break for Rich Point. Chang at a three on two. And Seven Lakes really needs a good power play here. Some insurance up three to two. But comes out to center for a face-off just outside of the Spartan, excuse me, the Panthers zone. Schmoish works it to the center zone as they battle along the near boards. Condra and Morrow. Morrow goes down. Puck in the Panthers zone. Cleared out the center. Here's Schmoish on the shorthand, looking for a game-tying goal. Schmoish with a wrist shot wide. 45 seconds to go on the Spartan power play. Now Amex along the far boards. Morrow able to get it back out to center. And Hayden Haas clears it all the way down. That's going to be icing. That shouldn't that's be icing. A, that isn't. That shouldn't be icing. That was the inadvertent whistle. So I'm sure the officiating crew tonight will make good on that. That was not supposed to be whistled down for an icy. And got to think about as soon as this power play is over, Rich Point might pull the goalie. They may pull Weaver on the far side. He's only faced 12 shots. Yeah. 
Here's Gabori. And now the Panthers able to lift it down the ice. 15 seconds to go on the Panther kill. They still looking for a game tying goal as they trail three to two with 90 seconds to go. Here inside the Sugarland Ice and Sports Center. Nice interception and a steal by Amex, who backhands it down the side of the net and just hopping over the crossbar off Condra. Here's a shot by Gabori. Rebound, Condra with a wrist shot save by Weaver. Penalty is killed, and Weaver finds a loose puck and holds it on with 109 to play. Now you got to wonder at what point does Tom Anderson summon his goaltender to the net, it, to it, the bench. As soon as, if Rich Point wins this faceoff, and they get a they get a breakdown or a breakdown the ice. He'll he'll be out of there. Sixty nine seconds remaining. I, I guarantee you he's setting that up right now. He'll try to get his best line in there. Boltina's out of the penalty box. Get Morrow and Boltina out there. Turned into a good game, Mike. I, I didn't believe we'd have a high scoring game, and we haven't, but uh, the young players are looking really good. Well, teams combined for 11 goals back on October 17, but Ridge Point scored 10 of them. They got the game's first goal at 13.04, period number one by Drew Blake on the power play. In the second period, Gaburi, Amex, and Chang all scored to give Seven Lakes a 3 to 1 lead after two. Oh. Gabori and Amex first goals of the season. Only marker here in the third period came on the power play as Blake tallied goal number two at 448. And now 109 remaining in the third period. Seven Lakes closing in on victory number four. Ridge Point looking for their seventh win of the season as the teams play their first games after the holiday break. And they're down players, some of the Top scorers in the league not here tonight, specifically on the Ridge Point squad with Kean Stafford, Jeb Gould, and Charlie Blake not in attendance tonight. Boltana up the far boards. It got by Chang. Gabori will recover for the Spartans. Last minute of play, and Weaver goes to the bench. For the extra attacker, it'll be six on five for the remaining 50 seconds as Gibson has it at the half wall. Looks for Azarkoya. Buck deflects off the high glass and ricochets out to center. Boltina up to Gibson. Gibson with 35 seconds to go. Gains the zone. Wrist shot blocked. Got it back. Another wrist shot from a tough angle. And the ricochet goes off into the left wing circle on a shot that is stopped by Dorsey. I think Dorsey got that one off the face mask. 28 seconds to go. This is it. Condra and Blake for the faceoff to the right of Dorsey. Six on five. Up top, Morrow. Shot blocked, and it ricochets back into the Panther zone. Gabori diving for it with his stick. Boltina is able to come away with it, not concede the fourth goal. 12 seconds remaining as time is running out for the Panthers. Amix pins the puck along the corner boards, and that's going to do it. The Seven Lakes Spartans defeat the Rich Point Panthers by a final score of 3-2. They get their fourth victory of the season. And move into a tie with PFC with 11 points for fourth in the South Division. Coming up next, our post-game coverage on a 3-2 victory for the Seven Lakes Spartans. This is the ISHL on the Legacy Sports Network. What's in a name? A name can tell you a lot about a company. Take First Community Credit Union, for example. First Community Credit Union is just a better place to bank. They serve the families and businesses in the Houston, Katy, and Fort Bend communities. They take pride in the name first and want to be the one you look to, well, first. Because they've been a leader in the financial community for the past 50 years. 
with services like free checking, free bill pay, and a free Visa check card, as well as great rates on auto, mortgage, equity loans, and credit cards. First Community Credit Union promises to make a first-rate financial difference in your life. Find out why FCCU is just a better place to bank. Think first. First Community Credit Union. See what your friends, co-workers, and neighbors have been keeping a secret all these years. For more information, go online to FCCU.org or call 281-856-5300 today. Are you, are you ready to restart your path to wellness? At the Hotsey Health and Wellness Center, the most common goals that we hear from our new guests are losing weight, increasing energy, improving sleep, and increasing mental focus and clarity. Most importantly, people want off the prescription medications and to get back to a healthy and balanced life naturally. Are these your health goals too? Let us help you take charge of your health and wellness just as we're helping thousands of others every day. Get off the meds and on to wellness naturally. Let our doctors, nurses, nutritionists, and wellness coaches carefully craft the healthy life you've imagined. Feel better, look better, live better. Visit HOTSEHWC.com to learn more or call us at 281-698-8698. Mention this ad and receive two of Dr. Hotsey's best-selling books free with your consultation. 281-698-8698. That's 281-698-8698 or HOTSEHWC.com. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you to keep bacteria and food from making you ill with four simple steps. This will be a walk in the park. Clean. Wash hands and surfaces often. I'm waiting for the rain cycle. Separate. Keep raw meat away from ready to eat foods yep. cook make sure meat poultry and seafood is cooked to the right temperature Fire in the hole. and chill refrigerate food promptly yeah. check your steps at foodsafety.gov brought to you by the usda hhs and the ad council the road chip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov michael silvers and david feliciano back with you as we wrap up our first game of the season here for 2022 the Ridgepoint Panthers fall to the Seven Lakes Spartans by a final score of 3-2 to two, despite two power play goals by Drew Blake. Three goals scored by the Spartans in the second period, Gabori, Amex, and Chang. And they get their fourth victory of the season. The loss drops Ridgepoint to a 6-5-2 and two record. They maintain 14 points in the South Division. Well, Seven Lakes missing two of their best players. They only had 13 shots. But it worked out, and the MVP of this game is Dorsey, the young goaltender. Only a freshman in his 10th game came in giving up over four goals a game, stoned Rich Point and held him to two. What a performance by Dorsey. Indeed, and a couple of first-time goal scorers this season. Amex got his first goal of the season, and so did Gabori. And... By the way they played, you'd be shocked to find that they hadn't scored before, but we also mentioned at the top of our program tonight that Seven Lakes had trouble scoring goals. I mean, they had only had 30 goals scored coming in through their first 12 games of the season. Right, if you get some extra attackers who develop over the year, Amex could be that guy. I think Gabori's gonna be a great player, good size, very smooth player, knows the game. He's gonna be a good one for this program. It's good to have hockey back on the Legacy Sports Network, and of course, we've gotta wait another month to come back yeah. on the air. Uh, well, we're excited, uh, gonna see SJ a few times. We'll have doubleheader coverage for you on February 4th as the ISHL returns on the Legacy Sports Network with a doubleheader. First up, the Cinco Ranch Cougars will square off against the Paraland Friendswood Flyers, and then we'll see the Seven Lakes Spartans go up against the number one team in the ishl the straight jesuit crusaders it all gets started on february 4th at 6 p.m on the legacy sports network and that's going to wrap it all up here tonight from the sugarland ice and sports center seven lakes defeats bridge point by a final score of three to two the interscholastic hockey league is a production of the legacy sports network and tonight max sports tv any rebroadcast, retransmission, or any other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the Legacy Sports Network and Max Sports TV is strictly prohibited. Our thanks to Zach Bordice and Brian Oakert, the technical team bringing you the video of our coverage tonight for Max Sports TV. For my broadcast partner, David Feliciano, this is Michael Silver saying so long until February 4th.
This has been a presentation of the Legacy Sports Network. So long, everybody.